Mind Blown Chef here with the video that's gonna blow your mind. This is Cooking Made Simple. In today's video guys, we're gonna take a classic American grilled cheese and we're gonna put a slight spin on it. We're gonna make a crowd favorite, an Italian chicken caprese grilled cheese sandwich. Jeez, what a mouthful. All right, let's get started. First, we're gonna slice our tomato. We're gonna slice it kind of thin. If it's too thick, the juice from the tomato is gonna make the bread soggy. Then, we're gonna slice our mozzarella. Not too thick on that one either. Just nice thin cuts. This is fresh mozzarella. I don't like using the real dried stuff, the shredded stuff. This comes usually in a, in a water. And then our basil, I have a trick for you with the basil. We're gonna take it and we're gonna roll it up. Take all the leaves, lay them out flat, stack them on top of each other, and then roll them. And then you're gonna come back and you're gonna slice it. And you can slice this a lot thinner, but for this sandwich, I wanna have it somewhat thick. About like that size is good. We're gonna set that aside. Okay, now our chicken. And I know you guys have seen this at the grocery store. Chickens nowadays are more on the uh, pterodactyl side, if you will. So what we're gonna do is break this chicken down. There's two ways to do this. There's the old fashioned way, which I really don't like and I don't recommend is beating it to death. You might as well take the chicken outside, put it in the street and run over with the car. You're basically left with the, with the same outcome. So let's do it the right way. Take your chicken, AKA pterodactyl, and uh, let's clean it up. We're gonna slice off some of this fat right here. Now, if you'll notice, zoom in on this one for me, you'll see the chicken has a natural curve to it. It's got a larger side here and it's gonna naturally start to curve down. So take your knife and come at it on the high side and slowly work the knife with your hand flat downward. And this is gonna go with the natural curve of the chicken breast. So you get a nice, even slab, cut, filet. All right guys, so I got this chicken butterfly. It's still a little too long for a sandwich for my liking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut off the tail. I like that. All right, so now we're gonna get our pan hot. The key to a good sear is hot pan. We're gonna add some olive oil. And as soon as this starts to smoke slightly, we're gonna add our chicken breast to the pan. So for now, we'll season it up. <laughs> Both sides. All right, pan is ripping hot, so let's turn our fan on. Add our chicken breast. All right guys, chicken's in the pan. I'm gonna show you a slight trick here. As the chicken's cooking, you're gonna see this line start to come up the side, and that's the cooked part of the meat right there. So let it cook. It's gonna, depending on how thick your chicken breast is, it's gonna take roughly about three minutes per side. Should be nice golden brown before you flip it to the other side. But again, a good indication on how good the chicken is cooking is this line right here will start to become white and not pink anymore. And the higher it comes, the more that side is actually cooked. You may have to reduce your heat. You'll notice that it's starting to smoke quite a bit. Bring your heat down to like medium to low even. As long as the chicken continues to sear and bubble like this, the heat is fine. So bring it down. If you have to bring it all the way to low, it's just fine. Okay, so check it out guys. See that line I was talking about? And you can also see some golden brown right here developing. Now we're gonna flip it over. Look at that beautiful golden brown. All of that is nice seared flavor. In order to get that nice seared color, you have to have a ripping hot pan and don't touch the meat. Let it cook on its own. So now we're gonna cook for another three minutes roughly on this side. Okay guys, we have our beautiful seared chicken breast right here. So now we're gonna go to the second step and that's assembling the sandwich and actually grilling the sandwich like a traditional grilled cheese.
Okay, guys, now we're gonna assemble the sandwich. We have our ready-to-eat ingredients right here, tomato, basil, mozzarella. We have sourdough bread. I like using sourdough bread whenever I'm doing like a, a grilled, buttery type uh, toasted uh, bread. It comes out crunchier, it just has better flavor. Um, and we got our chicken breast, a little bit of balsamic. So let's start assembling. First, I take the mozzarella and I kind of smash it down a little bit so I can spread it. It, it, it'll melt even more evenly. Think of the cheese as glue. So I put the cheese on each side, I touch it to each side of the bread first because it's gonna kind of hold the sandwich together and it also acts as a barrier for the juices from the tomato and the chicken so the bread won't be as soggy. I add a little bit of salt and pepper Now we're gonna add the chicken, the bottom piece. We're gonna add the tomatoes. We're gonna add our basil. And they have it at the grocery stores. You can look for it, it's called balsamic reduction. Balsamic vinaigrette is also fine. Um, the reduction is just a little bit thicker. We're gonna add just a little tiny bit on top of the cheese. As you can see, this is thicker. So again, the idea is we don't want to make the bread soggy. We want it to be nice and crunchy. Oops. All right, now we're ready to start grilling this. Okay guys, now we're gonna start doing our, uh, our sear on the bread. Um, I like to use a non-stick pan for that. It, it creates a better crust. Also, it helps with the sticking effect because the bread is moist and it will stick to a traditional pan like this. Now, these pans are used for high heat for searing. That's how you're able to get such that nice golden brown color. You have to use a pan like this. It's a little bit harder to achieve with a non-stick pan. So, pan's hot, ready to go. We're gonna add our butter. You don't have to have spreadable butter. You can, this butter's hard, it's right out of the fridge. Just add to the pan. Drop our bread right on top. Now, the key to this is you don't want your heat too high. At first, bring it up, get it, get it bubbling, the butter inside the pan, um, and then you're gonna lower your heat to about a medium to low. We want the cheese and everything to melt and come together. If the heat is too high, what happens is your bread is gonna toast, it's gonna burn, and all your ingredients in the middle of the sandwich are gonna be cold. So it's key to have the temp at just the low to medium heat and watch everything melt and come together. Okay, so see these bubbles right here? That is indication that the temperature is perfect. Not too high so the butter doesn't burn, and not too low so the sandwich isn't just sitting there not doing anything. Nice bubbles like this. Again, if you have to adjust your heat, if you notice that the butter starts to get a little too brown out here, go ahead and turn your heat down a little bit. So we flipped over the bread. I kind of wiped up the old oil with a paper towel. Um, drop a couple pieces more of butter. Let that melt. And then just slide the other side around. That way you don't have any spots that aren't completely toasted. And that's it. Again, you have excess butter. You can take a paper towel and simply be careful not to burn yourself, but just wipe. That way it doesn't create any kind of burning um, flavor and gets infused into the sandwich. All right guys, it's been roughly about four minutes on the second side. The first side's gonna cook faster because the pan's gonna be really hot when you first introduce the sandwich. Um, so just, just remember, keep your temperature low, let it do its work. You want that cheese to start rolling out of the side of the sandwich. See how it's getting all melted right here? That's a good indication to me that everything inside the sandwich is hot and ready to go. All right guys, so sandwich is complete. Sex.
sexy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe, and leave some comments down below on dishes that you want to cook that we could cook together. Thanks for watching.